Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Opened my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. So welcome uh, again to those who are watching um, uh, the, the daily masses here at St. Mary's through YouTube uh, from all over the world. Uh, I'm just so happy that we've formed this uh, virtual community. I'm getting to know you and you getting to know us here, uh, here at St. Mary's. And we just, want to, we just want to minister to you in whatever capacity, you know, uh, during this, this lockdown period. And hopefully you are being blessed in any way uh, by the daily masses that we're doing here. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord. have mercy. May mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorification of your Christ and the light of the Holy Spirit have unlocked for us the gates of eternity, grant we pray that partaking of so great a gift, our devotion may grow deeper and our faith be strengthened. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The tribune who had arrested Paul sent him to Caesarea to be tried by Felix, the governor. After two years had passed, Felix was succeeded by Porcius Festus, and since he wanted to grant the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived at Caesarea to welcome Festus. Since they were staying there several days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a man here who was left in prison by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me about him and asked for a sentence against him. I told them that it was not the custom of the Romans to hand over anyone before the accused had met the accusers face to face and had been given the opportunity to make a defense against the charge. So when they met here, I lost no time, but on the next day took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought. When the accusers stood up, they did not charge him with any of the crimes that I was expecting. Instead, they had certain points of disagreement with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but whom Paul asserts to be alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wished to go to Jerusalem and be tried there on these charges. But when Paul had appealed to be kept in custody for the decision of his imperial majesty, I ordered him to be held until I could send him to the emperor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. 
The Lord has set his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom roofs over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, obedient to his spoken word. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things and remind you of all I have said to you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus showed himself to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter said to Jesus, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because Jesus said to him the third time, Do you love me? And Peter said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After this, Jesus said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our gospel today, we heard the beautiful account of Peter reconciling with Jesus. Now, if you've been participating in daily Mass online or have been reading along in a missalette, you may have noticed that we're now several chapters later in John's gospel. We've left behind the Last Supper, we've skipped over the passion and death of Jesus, and here we have one of the resurrection accounts where Jesus again appeared to Peter and some of the disciples. Jesus came among many other reasons to have a crucial conversation with Peter. Peter betrayed Jesus. He denied knowing him three times during the Passion. Peter left Jesus. And even though Peter had seen the risen Lord already since the resurrection, he was still going back to his old way of life. He was going back to fishing and he went back to what he knew before encountering Jesus. Yet while Peter abandoned Jesus, Jesus never abandoned Peter. 
And Jesus came to Peter and some of the other disciples while they were fishing, and they couldn't catch anything, which really symbolizes the reality of what we can do apart from Jesus. We can do nothing apart from Jesus. So Jesus, he appeared and instructed the disciples to cast the net once more. And upon doing so, they caught an overabundance of fish. Then they knew that it was truly Jesus upon the shore, and they they rushed to him, as we heard in the gospel. They brought some of the fish to share in a meal, and this meal was around a charcoal fire. And I I share these details with you because John shared them with us. He recorded them for a reason because they give us insight into how God works. Because just as Peter denied Jesus three times by a charcoal fire, Jesus now invites Peter to to reaffirm his love three times, also by a charcoal fire. So what is Jesus doing here? He's, He's bringing Peter back to the moment that likely continued to plague him, even though Peter had seen Jesus risen from the dead. Peter was plagued by a moment which filled him with great shame, regret, a moment which Peter was probably doing everything he could to, to forget about. Perhaps this is one of the reasons why he went fishing, to go anywhere, to do anything to try to avoid having to think about his sin, his failings, his betrayal to Jesus. And, and Peter's use of avoidance of the past can be the same for us at times. Have you ever done something that you were ashamed of or tried as hard as possible to leave in the past, to forget about? Perhaps it was something you did once, a grave sin you committed, or perhaps it's something you've been struggling with for years, something you're ashamed of and that you know is in opposition to God and in opposition to his church. And when this happens in our lives, we can sometimes compartmentalize. We can build these walls. We can build barriers where we try to contain and cover over our sins to hide the reality of what has gone on or what is currently going on. We can distract ourselves and busy ourselves in order to ignore the pain of being honest. Honest with God, honest with ourselves. And sometimes people can get so good at lying to themselves that they forget what the reality really is. That what initially shocked them, they now rationalize as being okay, as being normal. Because if it's not, if it's anything else, it would bring back a shame that they cannot bear. And and maybe this is you, or perhaps someone you know or, or have known. And this is a devastating place to be in. Because no matter what walls people establish or lies, we may tell ourselves, the truth will eat away. And peace, the peace that we seek, will always, it will always be elusive apart from the truth. Through such lies, we, we split ourselves both from God, from those around us, and and even from ourselves. Yet if if this is you or, or someone you know, we can take comfort. We take comfort in seeing how Jesus approached Peter. First, it's important to note that it was Jesus who came to Peter. Jesus made the first move in wanting to reconcile, in wanting to bring healing. Second, Jesus came to Peter by the charcoal fire, bringing Peter back to that, that time of previous denial to the reality of what happened, even though it would be painful, it was necessary to do so. Third, Jesus didn't yell at Peter. He didn't rebuke him or or shame him for his failure because Peter already knew. Peter knew what he did. and, And so Jesus invited him to receive the grace to transcend his failure, to rise above that moment of shame so that he may be liberated from the bondage of sin. And Jesus invited Peter to counter those three denials with three declarations of his love for Jesus. What Judas could not do, Peter did. Peter was able to repent and once more affirm his love for Jesus. And Jesus then, he entrusted Peter once more to take on this special role as the vicar of Christ, to become the first pope, the servant of his servants on behalf of Jesus, to watch over, to guard, to govern, and to feed his sheep. And so if seeing how Jesus dealt with Peter, this should make us want to examine our own lives, to ask ourselves whether there are any areas in which I'm trying to run away from, any sins from the past or the present that that I need to deal with. 
Although we may run our entire lives from the past, until we let Jesus come into us, until we let Jesus come to us in his mercy, to come to us in the sacrament of reconciliation, we will remain chained to the sins, chained to the bondage of the past. But if we let Jesus in, if we invite him into the pain of our faults, like Peter, we can rise above our past. And in turn, we can do marvelous things for God, things for the kingdom of God. So no matter what your past is, with God, you have a future. A future where God seeks your welfare. A future in which God yearns for, for goodness, for life in abundance. God desires to make all things new, including every part of your life that, that needs transformation and healing. And so I invite you to, to take time today, this, this Friday in which, like all Fridays, we should reflect upon our lives and reflect upon what Jesus did for us upon the cross. To ask God to illumine our hearts, to ask him to illumine our minds of any part of our past or present that needs to be brought into the light. May we allow Jesus to enter in so that he may heal us and grant us his forgiveness. And while this pandemic has greatly reduced access to the sacraments, many priests are trying to do their best to ensure that those who need the sacrament of reconciliation can go. And so if the Lord is, is stirring in your heart right now, I invite you to respond. To respond and run to the Lord in his mercy. Do not put off for tomorrow what you can do today. For none of us know neither the time, we know neither the hour in which we'll be called from this life. And when we're called from his life, we'll appear before the Lord in judgment. There will be a judgment. But right now, God, he's offering you his mercy. He's offering everyone his mercy, just as he offered mercy to Peter. May we accept it before it's too late. Mindful that we are sent on the same mission as Peter's, we ask God the Father to strengthen our faith. That the Holy Father and those who exercise authority in the church may be guided by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That married couples may be sensitive to each other's needs and find true happiness in their lives together. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That sinners may find hope and encouragement in the Lord's forgiveness of Peter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and those who are in distress may experience the Lord's presence amidst their sufferings and difficulties. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead may receive light, happiness, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I would just like to ask if you could uh, please uh, remember my, 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 my good friend, uh, Patrick Fontanilla uh, in the Philippines who, who, who passed away. Pray for the eternal repose of his soul and also for comfort and consolation to, to his family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the special intentions of this Mass, for the repose of the soul of Mark Lopato, the son of Tanya Pada, Padaler, Pad, Padelario. Okay? Uh, by Tanya Padelario. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to save the world through the work of your church. May we be inspired by the example of Peter to labor for the spread of your kingdom on earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, you are more precious. 
more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds, and nothing I desire compares with you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look mercifully, O Lord, we pray upon the sacrificial gifts of your people, and that they may become acceptable to you. Let the coming of the Holy Spirit cleanse our consciences through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Terence and Marcel, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we are married to be co-heirs to eternal life, 
and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At a Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
heart compares with Let us pray. O God, by whose mysteries we are cleansed and nourished, grant we pray that this banquet which you give us may bring everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you uh, once again, Deacon Marcus, for a wonderful homily. Are you sure you're new in preaching homilies? Because I could sit all day listen to you. <laughs> okay. I'd just like to invite everyone to join uh, us here at St. Mary's for the Novena to the Holy Spirit. Uh, which happens on, um, uh, from 3 to 4 p.m. Uh, at the St. Mary's Ottawa YouTube channel in preparation for Pentecost. And then we're going to have a Pentecost vigil on Saturday from 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, and we've invited Father Roger Vandenacker, the General Superior of the Companions of the Cross, to give a talk. And uh, he's an excellent preacher, and he's going to be talking about why we need the fire of the new Pentecost today. So, he's, uh, so I'm sure you would really uh, enjoy his, his preaching. Uh, so join us. Uh, it will be also live streamed uh, through St. Mary's Ottawa YouTube channel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And with our Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. King of all days, O oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. And you're all together lovely, all together worthy.